from the SAP Center at San Jose, home of the San Jose Sharks. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering HGST Sports Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by HGST. Now your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live at SAP Center at San Jose, home of the uh, San Jose Sharks, the Shark Tank as it's affectionately known. We're here for Sports Data 2015. We had a great time a year ago. We wanted to repeat the performance. Great shout out to HGST for sponsoring us and the, uh, mm -hmm. the Sharks for hosting us here at this great mm -hmm. venue. It's a terrific view out over the ice and we're excited now. We're shifting gears from the pro sports into CrossFit and CrossFit Games. CrossFit has taken the, the world by storm. People are super passionate about it, if you know anyone that's involved with it. So there's the workout aspects. You probably see one going up in your local neighborhood. HDST's really kind of adopted CrossFit for internal bonding and competitive nature and having better health. But also there's the CrossFit Games, which is competitive. It was on uh, last summer, if you didn't see it. It's kind of crazy. There's a lot of running around and people throwing weights and jumping. <laughs> so uh, we're excited to have the CrossFit guys. So welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Let's get a big shout out. So we have Justin Berg, you're the GM of the CrossFit Games. Yep. Joe Novello, the producer of the CrossFit Games. Yeah, that'll do. And down at uh, our far right, uh, Kyle Machetto, he's the tech guy. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so the CrossFit Games, so I, I have to admit, uh, I talked to Chris, you know, we were setting this up and I hadn't really seen anything about CrossFit, so I turned on the CrossFit Games and it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. There's a lot of stuff going on. I think it was down in Carson, right? It does. Yeah. We've got our world championships down in Carson, California, but that's really kind of the, the tip of the pyramid. The, uh, the broad base is we've got over 13,000 affiliated CrossFit gyms who are all supporting this from the bottom and the beginning of the season. And uh, we crown the fittest man and woman on earth every year. So let's back up a couple steps for the people that aren't familiar with CrossFit. When did it get started? How did it get started? How do we get to here? Uh, well, CrossFit started with a uh, guy named Greg Glassman, who was actually from this area. Uh, he founded the program, started getting kicked out of a lot of local gyms, uh, founded the program, and the program was so effective that other people started calling and saying, hey, you need to teach us how to train our trainers in the CrossFit method. Uh, started the seminar business that we've developed to the point where now we run between 15 and 20 seminars per weekend, every week of the year, all over the country, all over the world. Uh, and then also people said, hey, I want to be involved with that program, so I'd like to have a CrossFit gym myself and train people locally in my town. And uh, so that started the affiliation program, which now has over 13,000 affiliates, almost half of those outside the U.S. Wow. And what year approximately did it get About 15 going? years ago. About the games, years ago. Uh, nine years ago this year. Nine years ago. Awesome. And Joe, what is it about CrossFit that people get so passionate about? I mean, it's... You talk to people about CrossFit, they have an opinion, right? They either oh love yeah, it and, and know all about it, maybe not know anything, and then some people are like, ah, you know, that CrossFit, that's a little crazy. But it, it really touches people in, in a very uh, particular way, a very special way. Well, yeah, I think, I think the first thing is that, you know, we have an, an enormous um, fan base that are fully engaged in, in uh, participating and watching CrossFit. Uh, the interesting thing about the games is it doesn't just start with the 40 top athletes that compete at Carson in July. It starts with 230,000 people around the world. As a matter of fact, I think Justin knows this better than I, but I believe we're the biggest participatory uh, sporting event in the world. Right. Um, all of these people have been uh, working out at their gyms. They get the opportunity to do the workouts, the same workouts that the top athletes do and um, they get a chance to qualify. Well, w once you've done it, uh, once you've participated in this, it it's just uh, uh, swells up um, people's enthusiasm for the sport. So if you start with the 230,000, only uh, you know, a, a mere fraction of them make it to Carson for the final, but all of them are you know, uh, big fans, big uh, cheerleaders for the sport. And of course, it's infectious uh, to the people that are in their local uh, gyms or the local boxes mm -hmm. and, and their families and so forth. And you really get uh, just a tremendous uh, wave of enthusiasm for the sport. So out of a typical gym, 230,000 people out of a typical gym in suburban wherever, how many people that, that work out of that gym actually start that journey? 
A, a lot of people, because I think the communal aspect of CrossFit makes it very approachable. So even though you might not win the CrossFit Games, it doesn't mean that you can't participate in the Open, which is really a community event. It's a celebration of people who are competing for the first time. Maybe they're able to compete for the first time. They walked in and they were a world-class couch potato, and that was about it. But they got themselves to the point where they could actually do the workouts as they were written and prescribed, and then they want to celebrate and also go through the experience of that workout with the fittest athletes in the world. It hurts for the good ones just as much as, uh, you know, as it's the same, it's just as tough for a, a new athlete right. going through that. It is interesting. I mean, the, the community aspects in so many things that we do now are so important. And, and at the end of the day, we are social animals. We like to do things mm -hmm. with other people. We like to have a shared experience. And as, right. as the Marines and the Army taught us long ago, nothing builds a bond like going through hell together. Um, so, Kyle, talk about some of the, the actual events and, and, and what is kind of the, the boot campishness of it that does create this bond between people. Um, that's a great question. He's been to boot camp, Kyle. Yeah, I've so. I, I been to real boot camp. I did almost 12 years in the Marines, so it's very similar to that aspect. Um, I think that there's a certain bond in the, the, the pain and the group atmosphere and the shared suffering that goes into your first workout or your millionth workout in CrossFit. And that's, that's a big point. Most of us aren't going to play in the NFL. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But every day when you go to a CrossFit gym, you get to have your World Series Game 7. Every day you get to have your Olympic moment, whether it's preseason playoffs or, or the championship. You get to go in there and compete, and whether that's with yourself or the clock or the 10 other people in the class with you. It's, it's a big bonding experience. And then now there's the corporate aspect. Obviously, HGST is a big sponsor. They brought you in. I've mm -hmm. seen the videos of everybody working out out of, out of the parking lot at the, yeah. at the headquarters. <laughs> Explain kind of how that dynamic works and how that's kind of helping CrossFit evolve, but also as a, a different way for really CrossFit to get involved in the community with kind of a different binding, if you will. Well, it, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a love story that started with there was a core group of CrossFitters inside that company. And uh, it started from their top, so their executive suite was all into CrossFit. They had had a CrossFit experience before. They understood how that transformed communities, how it broke down some social barriers, got things much more kind of even keel, <coughs> and built some really strong relationships. They approached us and said, hey, we're doing this, and we want to kind of hang out and see if there might be a potential for a partnership. We obviously use a lot of their products. Um, we're in the business of storing a whole lot of video, and we have a leaderboard, which is popularly attended uh, by a lot of different people who really care about their score and their results in the games. Uh, so it became kind of a natural fit for us that they were CrossFitters themselves. They believed in it. They saw what it was doing for their own relationships and for their company, and they happen to have a very complimentary product for what we're doing in our day-to-day -day business. Right. So, Kyle, uh, talk about the feedback. I, I think so much of this stuff today that gets popular wearables and Fitbits and everyone's getting a Fitbit. It has to really do with feedback loops, right? Just simple feedback loops that give people the feedback they need to try to improve, to try to get better. From a technology perspective, how do you see these types of feedback loops and, and data driving people to stay motivated, to try to achieve more, to, to get deeper in their engagement? I think that we're a society of instant gratification at this point, and I think that the wearables are very good for motivating people to, to get up and see results and get you know the badges and the achievements and to share with their friends what they've done. Um, and I think that that's a struggle that we we don't particularly have in CrossFit because you're coming to that gym every day. Your, your wearable is the whiteboard and the whiteboard <laughs> marker right. and the coach telling you how you're doing and, and the clock telling you how fast or slow you're going. That's, that's CrossFit's wearable. And uh, I don't know, if you're looking for instant feedback, CrossFit's not going to give you instant feedback. It takes a good long dedication to get really good at it and to see results, but it's guaranteed to be there. Yeah. And then, Joe, you, you've been a producer. We're talking about off flight and you've got lots of Emmys. You've produced events. How's the CrossFit Games different? How, how's the evolution of showing, you know, kind of modern day sporting events different than it used to be? And what's kind of the engagement that you really are trying to? achieve because it's a very intimate thing watching on TV. You're, you're like down there, they're throwing the weights around. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's not from the catbird seat, from the high view. I, I think the, the unique thing about uh, the CrossFit Games is, is um, the, the ability of the athletes uh, and what they're able to accomplish on the field of play. Um, the thing that I tell most people is it, what you're watching is so difficult and they make it look so easy mm -hmm. that you, you, when you really start to break it down, it's extraordinary what they're doing. And, and uh, it happens on all levels. We had teenagers competing this year. 
we have master's division, and I, I'm uh, in the master's category, if you will. Uh, and, and one of the most amazing things I witnessed was uh, uh, one day I sat in the, in the stands and watched the 60 plus year olds picking up barbells and throwing them up over their heads. And it actually blew me away. Because I do that in the gym, and I know how hard it is uh, to do what they're doing. Right. And when you scale that up to the top athletes, um, watching them compete, watching them do what they do, and accomplish it in, in such an um, amazing manner, but at the same time in such a community atmosphere. Anytime you watch a CrossFit competition, the person who gets the most cheers is generally the person who finished, right. finishes last. And that sense of community uh, that extends throughout the CrossFit uh, world happens every time we have an event on the field of play. And I think that's one of the things that blows most people away, is that you can beat the trash out of the guy next to you, but when the competition is over, everybody's trying to help everybody else get better. And that's really what you know a lot of CrossFit is all about, is making people better. Yeah, because it's really just self-improvement. That's what people yeah. are celebrating. Because there's a lot of great athletes doing really hard things that you can watch on Sundays. You can watch them sure. trying to hit a baseball. You can watch World's Strongest Men. But, but they're not normal people. Most of those people, you know, <coughs> we couldn't as hard as we ever wanted to train. Most right. of us could never achieve what some of those really high-level uh, elite athletes do in, say, football or, or whatever. But, but this is an opportunity for anybody who puts in the time and effort to potentially achieve you know, great uh, returns on, on, on their investment, as well as be part of something, as well as you know, maybe they win, maybe they don't win, but it's really, it's the community thing that seems to be really the driver. Sure. And everybody improves, everybody improves. Yep. And I think that relativity really is unique to CrossFit, because you don't know what it's like to sprint with Usain Bolt or what it's like to catch a pass from Tom Brady, but you do know exactly how heavy that barbell is, <clears throat> and you know how hard that pull-up is. You know how out of breath they are. And so when you see that, it adds an extra layer and dynamic to the characters that are participating in the CrossFit games. And that's what makes us different and a little bit unique, is that this isn't just sports for entertainment. You don't just sit in your chair and go, boy, that guy was great. Who wins this year? You actually are hopefully motivated to do something yourself. You're motivated to take an extra step in your own fitness journey to be able to challenge yourself, get outdoors, you know, do something with your body that you might not have thought you could do before. Right. And I think that that's what's unique for us is this is hopefully adopting uh, or it's, it's enabling people to have a change in behavior, not just to be entertained for a couple hours on a Sunday. Right. Well, you know, there's lots of, of exercise trends that kind of come and go. There's the kettle balls and jazzercise. You know, I think back to my mom when I was a little kid. She was always <laughs> doing some jazzercise or something, this or that. How does CrossFit stay relevant? How do you stay fresh? How do you stay growing and not subject to whatever the next, I'll just pick on kettlebells because they're top of my mind. I saw some kettlebells the other day. Yeah. Um, and, and keep relevant because you do, you do have that other thing where you, have, you kind of the entertainment piece as well. You've got the workout as well as kind of the show and the contest. Sure. But how do you guys stay relevant? How do you keep the excitement up? Where do you go next? I think for, from a workout standpoint, yeah, this is designed to be an open source model. So we know we're in possession of the most effective fitness program on the face of the planet. The results are there. Um, we have quantified fitness. And that started with Greg, our founder, and, and uh, the guy that wrote this whole system from scratch is uh, he defined fitness. It is your work capacity across broad time and modal domains, which means you can put a number to your fitness. Okay, so, so one more time, say that one more time a little your, slower. Your, your yeah, this is the definition of fitness. There's a lot of smart people in the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm work, not so smart, that's why I got fitness slow is, <laughs> <laughs> your, your fitness is your work capacity, work capacity measured across broad time and modal domains. Okay. And what that means is if you take a variety so of not different not just one not just one thing, one not thing just one one domain or one kind of I'm not just thing. great okay. at things that take 10 seconds. I'm not just great at things that take an hour. I'm good at things that take from one second to five hours. Okay. I'm not just good with a barbell. I can also swim, and I can run, and I can jump, and I can throw. And you take all these things, and if they're quantifiable, they can be tested, and then you can take a statistical 
reading of who's doing well across all those different challenges, and the winner of the CrossFit Games does statistically best across a broad range of physical challenges. And that's what you see in CrossFit gyms, is people take a little kernel of that, and they say, hey, it's not going to be as broad and diverse as the CrossFit Games, but they're going to move their body with a lot of variety. They're going to constantly be working at high intensity, and doing that over time in a communal environment gives a lot of results. So for us, it's not what's new and what's different. It's staying true to our original mission, which is defining fitness and staying true to a very simple approach, which is you got to work hard, you've got to do functional movements at high intensity, but if you do that well in a communal environment, the results come, and they always come. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, thanks for stopping by. It's, it's uh, a really great trend. You guys are onto something pretty, pretty magical. And again, if you haven't checked it out, check out CrossFit. I'd never checked it out until we got involved, and I was, like, I was blown away. I was like, wow, <laughs> these guys are onto something. So thanks again for stopping by the Cube. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Justin, Joe, Kyle from CrossFit. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching the Cube. <laughs>